Uh, all right. I have begun the recording. Tape is officially rolling. Uh, ask your parents what tape wor- was, everybody. Tapeworm. Tape was. That's what I meant to say. Tapeworms. And, uh, yeah, it's tapeworms. And uh, sit back and enjoy because we begin in three, two, one. Oh, Jesus. Hello and welcome to CORE. This is CORE episode 329 and this is uh, Thursday, August 25th, 2022. I'm Scott Johnson with Bush Schwartz and John Jagger and we are here on your Gamescom week to sum up what the hell happened in Germany, what happened here, and what happened in our hands with our controllers and our keyboards and mice. So sit back and relax as we bring you another episode of CORE. <laughs> All right, so should we talk? We should talk about Gamescom a little bit. Um, it wasn't like earth shattering or anything, but the you know it's the world's only E three like conference that's left. So we should you know in, uh, respect it, I suppose, for trying its best to be that thing. And uh, a lot of people like Gamescom. So if you went to Cologne, Germany, and got to see the whole thing, great, good on you. Uh, I'd love to hear from you and let us know what you saw on the floor. Otherwise, the rest of you are just going to hear this little rundown. Uh. We'll start with whatever is everywhere. What? No. It's called everywhere. The name of the product is everywhere. Yeah, so everywhere. Whatever that, whatever that is. Whatever, whatever that is. Whatever is everywhere. Uh, or everything. These are is it X, everywhere, everything. What's cool about the, uh, it's everything. Everywhere? No, everywhere. Thank you. It's everywhere, yeah. So the reason we're confused is because we have that movie out this year. Everything always everywhere at once or whatever the hell it's called. What is it? This weekend, isn't it? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. That's um the... This the every, George Miller joins out this weekend. Oh, yeah, why, that why is are we too. talking uh, about the weekend? What's the weekend? No, the weekend, thousand years of uh Cheerios, <laughs> something like that. There you go, <laughs> whatever it's thousand called. years of waiting. I think no, it's the, yeah, that, the George but Miller joint. But what's the one yeah. with with Michelle Yeoh? Everything stuff? everywhere at once. Okay. You were right, I interrupted and contributed nothing. In fact, it was a net <laughs> negative when I contributed to the whole thing. So, well, this game, down, uh, the, what makes this unique or interesting, perhaps, is it's the former lead director of all things GTA at uh, Rockstar. He left, started this new company, and this is their first game called Everywhere. And it's really hard to tell what the hell's going on, except it appears to be very multiverse And uh, our main character uh, is jumping between worlds and doing who knows what. But my guess is, given the GTA uh, connection, this is probably very open world, uh, but not in a city or, you know, uh, a sort of GTA style thing. It's something more than that. So I don't know. They it looked cool. Say, they did not say what it was. No, not really. I mean, no, other than they showed the trailer and that was it. So we have no idea. But that has some pedigree to it. If you're, you know, if you like GTA or even if you don't, you have to admit GTA's dominance is something to be reckoned with. So somebody with a lot of that experience might have something to bear. Uh, are either of you excited about what it could be? Because I kind of am, but I'm not I sure why. Know. Yeah. Like I don't know, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I'm gonna flat out say no and uh, hope, to, hope to not be wrong. <laughs> it's like a stupid thing to open the show with. I don't, I don't know anything <laughs> about it. I feel like, I feel like, when I opened the document and I saw everywhere, that was when I knew the most about it. Yeah, and then I watched the trailer, and I now know less. Yeah, you throw, know less throw blocks. I mean, it looks like. Oh, really? Part of, part of what they said was it can be anything. Like I think they want to build in deep game mechanics of some kind. Oh, so I didn't gather it that. Sounded at all. like game, it could be, and they were like, it could be anything. What the problem with that. Is, yeah. So let's just start with the basics. I don't want to tell anyone I'm playing a game called Everywhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just going to play some Everywhere. Do you want to join me for some Everywhere? Like, do I want to even play something called that? No. Um, in terms of what it is, if you can't, if you can't tell me in a line what it is, like, okay, hang on, let me back up. You can have a teaser trailer and be coy, right? I'm not telling you what it is. It's our company and we're making this thing. But they did say it was something. This wasn't just show a trailer and let us guess and and hype and, 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 and look at it. It was like, no, this is going to be a thing that encompasses uh, deep, I think they mentioned RPG mechanics, like role play mechanics. 
They didn't say anything like they didn't say anything about big multiplayer uh, user created content though, right? My guess is this might be GTA Online, but as a standalone product. Oh, interesting. Which they should have said. Like I, I, you know, again, they were cagey about what it was. So Mm -hmm. they're really looking forward to it. It's going to have a lot in it. It's going to be really fun. Um. But I mean, if you're just going to come out and say anything at all about it, you can sum up your product in a few sentences. Yeah, I feel like they'll explain more later. They did not do a good job of summing it, but they felt the need to say something. You know what they're doing? They're 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 crutching on the fact that the dude's the former lead on all things GTA. That's what they're crutching on here. Yeah, because there's nothing else to talk about there. Like even what Bo said is a a guess. Yeah, we don't know. I I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> like know, I could we'll see, see. Mm. like imagine GTA is like very specifically or GTA online with the RP community is very specifically, mm-hmm. um, you know, cops and robbers stuff, right? There's right. no, there's no Skyrim, you know, setting. There's no cyberpunk setting. There's no final fantasy ripoff setting, you know, or just anime weeb setting, <laughs> it, you know, like, and my sense is that like this game like will have a bunch of assets will provide you with all those opportunities and might even provide services in those games to actually allow you to implement mechanics in those worlds because it looks multiplayer this doesn't look like a single player joint does it i couldn't tell i don't know yeah no i think i think they <laughs> mentioned that in the talk they did if, say if i remember okay. correctly i'm gonna be honest about this gamescom thing i didn't sit sit and watch it back to back i watched it at 2x speed and as soon as something looked crappy i just skipped it <laughs> so the whole experience was about 15 minutes for me mm. um because and i will explain why once i hit the award for most anticipated game wait they had awards they, yeah. they were giving awards oh but i not missed for, that I I already hate award shows, but these awards were not for merit or accomplishment. They were just for who generated the most excitement about a product. And listen, the the fun doesn't end there. The first one was most anticipated PC game. They listed three. Metal Hellsinger, Warhammer 40k Darktide, and System Shock. Um, Where's Baldur's Gate 3 on there? Let's get your pulse here. If you didn't see this or don't know then uh, please take a guess as to who won the award and got to give an award speech uh, and metal, got an award. Metal Hellsinger. They get it? Metal, John? Metal Hellsinger what, 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 what would be your pick, honestly? Is it Metal Hellsinger? You think that's the most anticipated PC uh, game? I'm just saying right if now? I had to guess what weird thing got chosen, I would, I would think. Yeah, you're I guessing don't. the weird thing. What? What is, sorry, you're giving the award. What are you giving it to? I'm giving it to Baldur's Gate 3. It's not even on that list. Sure, but of the ones on the list, what do you give? Give me those one more time. Please follow the rules, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> give me the give me my on three. the list. Which one are you giving it to? Think G- about it. Give me the three again. What was what's the list again? Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. Yeah, one we are anticipating. Yeah, System Shock. Yeah, and Metal Hellsinger. Uh, probably. I mean, for me, Warhammer 40k. Uh, but that. What do you think it would be the right choice? Uh, that's the right choice. The choice they probably chose was either Hellsinger or the other one, if I had to guess. You were hedging way too hard. John, do you have an opinion on this? I don't know. I'd probably go with System Shock. I like the System All Shock right. games Thank- a lot. Thanks, John, for, <laughs> yeah. for, for that concise response. I gave you an answer. I said I said Warhammer, and you said that wasn't no, good I, enough. I mean, objectively speaking, not the one you like. The one, objectively speaking, if you had to guess... The most anticipated, meaning the thing people are probably collectively looking forward to the most. If you're giving an award for this, so they gave it to System System Shock. I just, I guess, I'm saying I disagree. No, with that. so they didn't give it to System Shock. They gave it to Metal Hellsinger. Oh, geez, and I got really upset. I don't know what Metal Hellsinger is. Exactly. We, so I know what it is, but these, I only know all these games yeah. are great. Okay, I'm. Sh- there's no shade on those games. You literally have Metal Hellsinger, a niche game warhammer dark tide the one we probably all want the most out of that list maybe i i don't see awarding it you award it to system shock why because it's a classic game that other games have been built on 
you know what I mean? Like, it just seemed like common sense to me, right? Like, System Shock is... I just don't know why they're doing this at all. It's the it rhythm first-person shooter. Yeah, it's oh, like all yeah. hell, like, Doomish, but metal retro, metal and but things. yeah, metal songs, and yeah. It looks cool, don't get me wrong, it does. And, you know, mm -hmm. ch chat room is all saying System, system Shock. Like, if you're, if you're saying, what is the most anticipated title? A title we've waited 20 years to see another entry in that, that Bioshock was based on, the whole other genres, versus... War Dark Tide, it's niche. There's tons of those kinds of games. And Metal Health Singer, something only people that are into metal or shooters know about and hasn't made waves. The one you hear about is System Shock. To me, it's very obvious that it needs to be System Shock. Well, who, Shock. how are they picking? Who's picking? Someone voting? I don't know. I tuned out after that. I was, you know, and, and they had the audacity to bring that person up to give a speech. They're like, congratulations. They're like, thank you very much for recognizing us. Blah, blah. And I'm like, you haven't accomplished anything. What are you getting an award for? <laughs> like, you know, and, and like, how did they, how do they measure it? I am guessing like wish listing, but I wish list tons of things that I never buy. So again, that's fooey, but. That's coming to Game Pass, I think. Or if okay. it's voted on, it's voted by the most engaged people. It's actually not a litmus test. Like, there's a, there's a structural analysis you can do to say, like, the most anticipated game is 100% System Shock. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, and I, I guess it, I'm still I'm still understand why you have this at all. Is it because Jeff Keighley's there and he likes contests? Like, why even have this? It I makes don't know. No I think it's a me. Gamescom thing. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It was weird, and it wasn't the only one. It happens several times. I skipped them because I'm like, I'm not watching this. This is you know ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's fine. They're trying to put together a show. I'm not trying to be too much of a hater. I'm just saying what prompted me to start skipping ahead of this thing was like, I do not want to, you know, I'm not going to spend time watching them hand out awards for things that haven't come to pass yet. Yeah. <laughs> you mean... know, like it, it was, I don't think it was well thought out as a thing. So anyways. It's all to, just, all to explain it's that. Just and yes, it started with everywhere, which was a very frustrating announcement. I'm, it could be very excellent. This could be the start of a new Minecraft or Roblox or some phenomenon. Has that guy's pedigree for sure. Yeah. But the presentation was terrible, in my opinion. All like, right. Tell us what you're. Tell us what you're doing. Yeah. Like, what the a heck? Teaser Germany? trailer. Don't have your cake and eat it too. <clears throat> Did they do a German uh, presentation or some other international language presentation, and or is it all this Jeff Keighley in English? It, it was one? Jeff Keighley. Oh, I don't know if there's a second one. I think it's one presentation though. Okay, all right. I don't know if I love that either. I mean, also, well, uh, I haven't. I don't have any problem with Jeff Keighley. The guy works hard and loves games. It's great. But why is he every seat? Why does he do every uh, one of these? Can well, we get? He's probably be affordable, one... and he's you know looks good on camera, and he does a good job. Why not? Like he's the best of the best. Is he though? Because he's got a brand now, and like the, like this is kind of yeah. But there's I mean, I've been putting people. myself out there, Scott. I made that joke about hosting the PC Gamer Show. Maybe someone will hear it and go, "Let's get that guy. Give him a try." Yeah, bring that dude. I in. will host your show. Okay, I'm looking Medi at the... moderately well. I'm looking at some oh. additional video from Hellsinger. It does look pretty rad. I'm just putting it out there. It looks pretty good. No, they all look rad, but this is not... This is, yeah, this isn't designed not to even the trash metal Hellsinger. It's just that if you were to name your most anticipated games, mm. I don't think it would be in your top five. No, right? it wouldn't Or be. guess what the, the zeitgeists... Because this is about everybody. That's right? why it's stupid. That's why there's no point in this. Because everyone's got a different idea of what should be everyone's excitement. It's dumb. Yeah. It's dumb. I mean, yeah. That, that, yeah. That's why. That's why I started skipping it. I'm like, I don't want to. I don't. Wanna, I don't, I don't. Okay. Well, what did it, you this think? Was made by somebody who doesn't play. It wasn't made by you know. Wasn't made by a Phil Spencer type. That's for sure. Well, what did you think of? Uh, what did you think of Dune Awakening? I think this looks pretty cool. Um, it's a great CG trailer. I. Well, I was also I, not clear on what it was. What I read was that the, that this was a engine trailer, an engine next gen engine trailer. If that's true, uh, yeah. that has me more excited cool. because visually this thing looks insane. Um, but I don't know if that's actually still the or if that's the case or if I read that somewhere that was full of shit. Who knows? But basically, the way they're describing this is Funcom doing this. They describe it as a survival MMO RPG. So, hmm. uh. My guess is that means it's sort of, it's not wow level MMO. It's not like, you know, that sort of thing. At least I can't, I, as best I can tell, Funcom doesn't really make those anymore anyway. My guess is it's more like 
I don't know, Destiny it's or some other like model. Blizzard's probably working on what they're. I'm assuming they're also doing an open world survival MMO. Yeah, I think I think the open world survival MMO is a new thing on the horizon that we don't know quite how it lands. Because right now, survival MMOs are server based. Yeah, we don't have that I can think of like uh, game service provider hosted servers because that's what this MMO implies. It implies that I don't have to rent a server or play on a local save. I will play on your servers with tens of people, thousands of people. Like how many people on a server or an instance? What does it look like if some guy builds a toilet in front of my front door? What are the, you know, <laughs> that that's the concern is the chaos and impropriety impropriety of online play yeah. uh, versus a controlled server. So I'm guessing this is a another entry into a potential new, maybe almost fad genre, considering how well Valheim sold. Yeah. Valheim was a huge inspiration, and I think if you're making bets and uh, on new genres in the future, this is... Unless someone can think of one, I can't think of one. No. Someone mentions Conan Exiles is one. Which okay, is also Funcom, by the way. Same company. So, so there Possibly. you go. So maybe people who are in the know on that game know exactly what this game when, is going to look like. Whenever anyone says, Funcom's made a ton of games, but whenever they say the name Funcom, all I think of is that old MMO called... Oh, what was that called? Way back. Before WoW. Before even Galaxies. Oh, jeez. A company Anarchy named like Online. Anarchy Online. Yeah. That was them. And um man, that game was jank. What a janky McJank jank. I still liked it because I there was nothing quite like it at the time. But I look back now. I'll go back and look at video now. Oh boy. <laughs> that thing was rough. Um, but they've done so much more than that since and you know, their Conan MMO some years ago was pretty good. Their survival Conan game is supposed to be really good. And that had wiener physics because when you create your Conan die, your guy, your barbarian, you can make his wiener move. I remember that. Yeah. So that's you always good. Move. Yeah. Moving wiener. Um, what else? You know, they've been around. I guess this is a big, it's a big IP. So there's some expectations there. I can't tell yet. I don't know. But I think it, it has my interest from the setting alone. So, uh, yeah, I'm to... I, I, so I'm watching some Conan Exiles gameplay. It really does look like, so it has single player mm -hmm. and then you can go online. It's still not quite clear on how the online works, but it looks to me like, you know, an MMO with teamwork content. Pretty sure it's thing. like, it works like V with rising though. Your, you got to have a server, your, your own player housing basically. Yeah. But I think you have to like, run your own servers. I don't, and maybe they have some you can use that are, you know. Well, I think no. I think well, maybe it's for the online play where you don't have to use their servers. Like, okay, like you can visit my house and it's like a smaller server, mm. kind of like player housing works in Lost Ark, really. But mm. then you can get together and go out. I mean, I, I haven't played it, but it's some probably hybrid combination of, of single player versus sharing your creations with the outside world. Like, imagine setting up a potion shop, building your own potion shop or your own tavern. You know how you like that tavern mm -hmm. game? Yeah. I Let's do like that tavern game. Your own tavern and yeah. and then bring it into the MMO world and have people visit and you can RP. They did, they added a darts game to my tavern game, like a mini game in there. So the guys, so you can set it up in your place to keep your tavern yeah. patrons happy. They can throw darts at a wall and try to hit a target. Yeah, it's, I'm looking at a disco hall in Conan Exiles right yeah, now. Yeah, Conan's got all kinds of crap in it. Um, and this people like that game. Came out in 2018, still going strong. Um, it's a full price game. I don't know, over 55,000 reviews on Steam. I think that sold real well for them. Survival um, genre, baby. People I, love it. I own it. I just don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, I never. I don't think yeah. I ever played it. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, offline single players bug. Blah, 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 blah. So, oh, I thought it had a thing about how the multiplayer works. It doesn't say. But anyway. This, was, oh, this one's not described as an MMO. It's called an online multiplayer survival game. Okay. So perhaps MMO is the the next step of development in a game like this where, where they say it's more now, whatever that looks like. Do you think uh uh do you think Dune Awakening will have wiener physics or no? I think they'll not do that. No, it's not known for its wieners. <laughs> no Conan is for sure, but I Conan, agree. The Conan IP is known for yeah. Lots of wieners. Oh yeah. And dude, boobs. Dude, everyone's wearing bikini armors. 
yeah, guys yeah. there's and boobs and wieners and whatnot um i maybe i'll check that out i'm kind of in the mood weirdly just to see what it's up what's up in there not with the yeah, wieners maybe. not the wiener part just the game all right everybody Peen- uh, peeners are always up peeners so. peeners i like that term uh all right then there was uh, atlas fallen which uh is a thing i'm um, trying to see did i miss this one? Oh, you know what i this is the first i'm hearing of atlas fallen uh bo what do you think atlas fallen is um so atlas fallen is made by the guys who did surge okay or the surge so that was the sort of sci-fi take on a souls like oh right surge um, two and surge one yep I know yeah, so ones. this isn't looking souls like this is looking way more uh almost less, uh, like for spoken or just like high action something different from the the team behind this is is my sense it's funny okay. too even youtube if you look at the trailer and scroll down it auto it auto categorized it as black desert online oh weird <laughs> which makes sense and looking at it you know it's like Big, you know, Gonzo super abilities. Weird <laughs> so armor. wait a minute. The algorithms on YouTube went, uh, well, this looks a lot like that. We're just going to call it that? That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. I, I, or like uh, they didn't pick the game properly. I don't know what the story is here, but it's listed as Black Desert Online right now. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I'd love that. Which tracks. Like it has that, you know, looks like crazy combat. So this is one where I'm like, so this is a better example of like something where everywhere should have done this which is like they sort of showed a sick trailer they didn't say much else about it uh, action rpg so yeah, yeah. You, know, you can probably guess but the trailer looks sick and um you know i'm willing to get i have an open mind about this one like i don't know what to expect but i do like i like flashy combat i'm sure a lot of us do and yeah final fantasy looking monsters and i don't know it looks sweet it does actually look kind of cool. Hear more. This traversal looks fun. The way she's moving, I assume the player will get to do some of that. Yeah, the parkour, like the Warframe style yeah. parkour. I mean, yeah, you know, it looks. I, I'm. This is definitely uh, one to watch. John, you excited about the desert motif here? You got the. No, uh... <laughs> I got so bored doing this trailer, I turned it off and uh, I, I walked it. away. Like, I got up and just walked somewhere and came back, and then they were talking about spaceships, and I was like, is this the same game? It's probably a different game. It turns out it was a different game. It's a different game. Yeah. I thought this game looked um, just generic. I mean, it's a cutscene, like, but it's a cutscene that's selling me on stuff that just I don't know. I'm getting too jaded because it was like, it was like, what if we put every trope that made every other game distinct in one game? We created something just. I just lost complete interest and it's like he lifted the bridge with his mind he has a weird sword that kind of is like a whip but it's a sword uh-huh. monsters that come out of the ground yeah. big jumps and shit and i was just like okay <laughs> this is where kira comes from kira has a sword like that like, he's I got just, a kira sword yeah i just i don't know i the game may be awesome but uh my honest opinion is that i watched a little bit of the trailer and was like eh and I wandered away uh, to get a drink and came back, and then they were talking about spaceships. I'm uh, not quite where you are, but I guess I, I, I didn't see anything here that blew my mind, but I do like the setting. I think it looks, that looks really cool. I like the combination of what looks like some fantasy and some, not steampunk, but, you know, there's some machinery and business going on. Post-apocalyptic magic sort of setting. Yeah. The hybrid. If you yeah. go to two minute. I mean, what really sells me is the two minute forty mark, mm. just towards the end of the trailer, when they just show a quick uh, smash cut of all the big abilities and the, the tr- like the sliding, the sand sliding. Oh yeah, the sand sliding is awesome. Uh, yeah, like it just looks really sick. Yeah, two forty. Uh, let's see here, two forty. Here it is. Oh yeah, at the end here they have a little. Uh, it's like a montage. Yeah, it's just like all these, you know, cool stuff sliding through. The, like, I just feel like this game, like, I can see, like, the setting. Yeah, it's nothing special. And, like, John's very accurate in his comments. But, like, if a game, you know, just like you press buttons, crazy lightning comes out and shoots out of your penis, and, like, your big hammer flies around, you're like, I'm like, all right, like, you know, this, it could be a really fun thumb candy uh, kind of game with lots of gonzo. Uh, spell effects and stuff like that and that'll that goes a long way with me it does as well for me what i like black desert i I like the dashing around i didn't see a ton of that because like i left before we got to that last yeah that's why i I wanted the dashing around that looks okay 
Um, yeah, I mean, it looks like it looks kind of fine. I mean, one of my favorite games is that uh, Phoenix Rising game that we played, Scott. We yeah. raved about that. Great game. And I would have said the same thing about the gameplay for that, like very early on. I was like, oh, it just kind of looks generic. Sometimes things arise above it, and this could be that, but uh, it didn't hold me through the trade. Very well could be. Who knows till we yeah. see. But um, my take is um, I'm probably a little fresh off of uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, which is also in the desert all the time, and also fighting big bosses, and also some of these stuff I'm seeing here. So for me, that actually really works because I enjoy the hell out of that. So if this is like a more action-y, less Souls-like experience... Uh, not that it, yeah, Souls this, likes this aren't actions. Not what I mean. Like at all. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think John's right about his comments just feeling a little bland. It's the last five seconds that made maybe sit up on my chair and go, oh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> this black desert thing is making me laugh though. Look at that right yeah. there. Boom. Wrong it category, like, dummies. Oh man. I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't look that wrong. I mean, it doesn't look wrong, but it is. <laughs> it is wrong for yes, sure. It is wrong. But. Uh, I want to play that and just determine my feelings then but i have a feeling that looks like it might be kind of cool it's also a developer that isn't completely proven and a publisher that you just sort of think of as like oh they make weird steam shit focus entertainment they're fine but like none of this they, screams they make a to plague me. tale though that's huge on consoles right plague, plague tale, tale is big yeah People and they like make that. your hardship. Oh yeah, it's a weird Steam game. Gotcha. Still kind of a weird Steam game. You know? Hardship yeah. game. Hardship game. <laughs> it just sounds like a game that's about like just trials in life. Yeah. Like got... uh... oh, shipbreaker. Sorry, hardship shipbreaker. Oh, hardship, hardship game. Hardship game. You, go, you break your leg on your way to pay your electric bill. Yeah. It's oh a real no! Hardship. What do I do? I, know. I can't it's... afford both. <laughs> hardship or hard space shipbreaker, which I just call shipbreaker. Uh, is coming to Game Pass console in like a week. So that's cool. If you thought the PC people were having all the fun, you're going to get that on your console soon. Um, all right, moving on to Homeworld 3. I'm excited about this for one reason. First of all, I love Homeworld, but the main reason is I think this looks like way more of what I want out of a Homeworld game, and that is scale. Uh, previous to this, the other two were amazing games, but they were out in the middle of nowhere like they're just in space which you know that's fine it's a space rts but they always felt a little bit remote in that here's your giant ship that poops out the little ships the little ships will fight and they'll go back to the big ship this has stuff where the big sh the big big ships are kind of everywhere and some of this fighting is happening over vast uh structures of other ships and derelicts and stuff like that it reminds me of you know, everybody skimming on the top of the Death Star and then flying down into it. Uh, in particular, the unfinished Death Star. There's a bunch of that kind of vibe for me. But I love the Homeworld uh, vibe. Everything about the sound and music of those games is just like my jam. And I'm, I'm legitimately excited about 3. So we'll see. Does anyone else care yeah, about Homeworld but me? Or am I the only yeah, one? I mean, I want to. I, I played Homeworld 1 and 2. It was one of those where it was like, I really want to get into this. And I just never fully did. Uh, but I love the style. I love the look of the world. Um, I always thought it was really cool. But it always felt like a really hard game to learn back in the day. Like it was it was, uh, it was, was challenging for a young John to uh, get used to the controls and the 3D space for a strategy game. Uh, but I love how this looks like I think it looks so good um, and it's got all the things that you associate with Homeworld there the like weird little rectangles that mm -hmm. just open up in space and then a ship flies through it uh, the trails coming off of the little ships like that was always the big thing is it just looked like bees buzzing around ships in space back when you play the old game uh, I think it's really I think it's really cool finally yeah. they're going back to it they're not you know I think they did. Uh, didn't they make a Homeworld game that was just all on a planet? Uh, yeah, or a or, um, not Arrakis, but it was like Arrakis. It was like a big uh, it's a desert planet. You'd hate it because it's all Karak. desert. Yeah, yeah, just Karak. stupid, Karak? Like, Karak. stupid Karak. stuff Karak. like that. It was good though. Uh, that was a says, good game. Just say no to Karak. <laughs> yeah, but that was a good game, by the way. Like, yeah. I don't want to. I know you you were out of it from the get go, given the setting and everything. But it's actually a very good RTS. It's great. It's they're like, it's what good. if that amazing space real time strategy happened in the <laughs> setting you hate most? Oh, 
on a desert. And it's not. It's not space. It's on the ground. It's never gonna it's work. It's like for John. Star Fox. Anytime they're like, "Hey, you're gonna be in the tank for this one," it's like, "Oh, that's why I got Star Fox." Thanks. You figured it out. Well, what if John? What if they set it on a on a snow planet? Would you change your tune? Would you be like, oh. "I would be"? I'd still think it was a bad idea for your space real time strategy game to be like, "Let's drop space." Mm. You know, but. I would be more interested. You'd be more okay. So you'd still be out from a I don't want to play on the ground perspective, but more in given that there's it's snow and not dirt. Yeah, I just don't like deserts. We've talked about four games so far, and three of them are in deserts. Yeah. Ugh. I love it. Love it. So you just live and grew up in one. I'm telling you. If well, so did I kind of, but I just love deserts. I love them. They're my favorite place to be. If I could live in the desert, I would. In fact, I think I hope I retire somewhere in like southern Utah where there's like just red rock for miles. Oh, oh, that's what I want, John. I don't want to live in Phoenix where it's hotter than my oven when I cook a turkey. But yeah, uh, you know, something something a little less than that. Maybe St. George. We'll see. Uh, the Expanse drummer, everyone's favorite. Whoops, I screwed that up. Everyone's favorite character from The Expanse, unless you're crazy. I love her. I don't know if she's not my favorite. Oh, she's easily she's my good. favorite. She's she's in the she's in the top for sure. I love her so much. Um, well, anyway, this is uh, a Telltale style adventure game that looks nice. I think I kind of want to play it's this. It's in the Expanse universe, so that's an automatic buy. Like Expanse started and ended pretty strong, and was a good. Yeah. It's a good haul. It's a good world. I love it. So yeah, like I'm signed up. Could. I'm pretty sure they got Kara Kara Gee to do the voice. She's the she's drummer in the show. She's mm. very good. Um, yeah, yeah, they have to. Like her, that's the thing is her voice. Out of anybody in there, like she's the most iconic. Yeah, if you're making uh, a whole the characters, like I mean, also maybe mo- one of the most memorable. I think. Oh, there she Thomas is. Thomas Jane kind of killed it in that show, to be honest. Sure, but she's really, she's really. I mean. They're all kind of great. <laughs> Even when they're kind of goofy or sort of normal, you still sort of just like, you, you know, I guess like the, the hardest one for me was Amos, like, because he plays a psycho, like a, you know, psycho, a rough Jarhead. psycho boy, but he looks like such a good, clean, muscly dough boy. Like, I'm just like, it's hard to buy that he's a psycho, but he plays, he does it so well that you're like, yeah, yeah. You, after a while, you're like, oh yeah, that's the look, that's the face of crazy yeah, right there. But at first, you know, like some of the actors just don't, I think it's maybe to their credit they don't look like their types. I suppose. Yeah, I suppose so. And and, and it it actually I don't know they they all do such a great job they win you over and I think the same is true of drummer where you're just like oh there's a fragile little girl. I will say this too for a for a uh, for a Telltale game these faces are way more emotive and natural. Yeah. They're known for being pretty stiff back in the day. So this yeah. stuff looks all right. Ooh, heads look severed heads in space. Yeah, oh. see, I skipped past this one because I'm like, I didn't want any spoilers on it. Like this is this is like a for hundred percent will buy. Like I don't need to see any more marketing. Yeah, I'm actually kind of into now. this. I'm uh, excited. YouTube. Speaking of the things YouTube thinks stuff is, it thinks this is Mass Effect. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, YouTube! Why are you auto populate? Who's in charge of their social media uh. accounts? Like. I know you can do that manually. They're letting the they're letting the computer decide. That's that's a bad idea. Don't be doing well, that. Wait, hang on, what the expand? Because I I just got them from wherever, so I don't know who's hosting. This is Gamespot. Gamespot. They should know better. Gamespot. Yeah. Sure. Uh, all right, let's talk about Killer Clowns from Outer Space, a movie I've seen three times in my life. Once for film sack. <laughs> uh, it's an amazing, terrible eighties movie. I- love Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I didn't expect to love that movie as much as I ended up loving that movie I, i'm it's with you really good i'm with you 100 percent. i wasn't I, sure if you guys would even know what this is because i put it in as a highlight uh because i remember i love full moon studio movies all around yeah and uh i believe this was a full moon joint. full moon joint anyways this is a, not my favorite of them but definitely a good one so yeah it's awesome killer clowns is awesome and it's stupid and this actually kind of got me weirdly excited I mean, do we know much about like what's going on though? Like, what kind of game this is? Is it just a? This isn't. Is this a multiplayer like? Uh, uh, what's uh, that? Game? Gather a team of survivors to fight the extraterrestrial threat in a game based on the '80s called Sounds Like 
Yeah, like, like left for, for dead not left for dead. Awake yeah. tomorrow, dead. Awake, die tonight. Wake up tomorrow. What is it? Yeah. Dead by daylight. Live free, die hard. <laughs> dead by daylight. I think is the thing I'm trying to think of. But it looks like it's a yeah, little more. It does active. look like that. Like yeah. you know what? This is great. I'm excited. It's not zombies. It's something different. It's something stupid. I love it. Game Pass, I think, too, which is always. Uh, good. I didn't think I was excited about anything from Gamescom. I just changed my mind. You take it back. You're I into got this. one I'm really excited about. All right. How about uh, Where Winds Meet? All right. Now, let's try not to be jaded old gamers who've heard every dumb title ever. Uh, I mean, I was immediately <laughs> thought between the cheeks, but, you know. <laughs> That's where my wind meets. Um, I don't know much about this other than it looks like a trippy, you know, I don't know, ghost story looking thing. I, I don't know what to make of this one at all. So it looks like a thing. There's like, some Asian uh, stuff. It looks like what's the music video where the kids' eyes are all lit up? Oh, um, oh, uh, uh, you know, oh. there's a turn around. Do, 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 a little, yeah. little bit for the <laughs> hurt, 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 hurt. <laughs> it looks like that. Yeah. Turn around. What is that? I don't song. know. I can't remember the name of the song. Anyway, there's a lot of. Chad will know. Chad will <laughs> figure it out. Chad's so on top of things, they'll tell. Total Eclipse of the Heart. That's what it was. Chat room calls this Total the Eclipse Chinese the Chinese heart. Ghost of Tsushima is what they're calling this. Um, I'd be all right with that. And that game's great. So I don't know what to make of this though. It seems too ghosty to me. Like too like oh the myst- mysteries of the of of bullshit. Woo. I don't know. I don't know what to make of this one. Seems fine. Looks pretty. Seems nicely made. There's a guy walking around got a horse you know what else do you want oh and he oh look at this him climbing doing some uh, some assassin's creed business all right maybe it definitely I'm... looks like somebody saw the trailer for ghost of tsushima and was like we could do that too yeah Ooh, like, every now and water. then you just see you just see somebody be like what made that trailer good well we could do it too we they're, can figure it they're out. doing uh they're they're doing that crouching tiger hidden dragon bullshit that's kind of cool where you know he can run on water, he just he just hung in the air forever, uh, controls the wind. Yeah, like, I think that's probably going to be like a distinct thing from Ghost. Of, like I can see the comparison. Like it's obviously really good graphics. And yeah, yeah, artistically focus, comparison. Focus on the sword yeah. play, but yeah, I think it's going to do. What did you call it? What is it? Uh, I don't Ushu know. or something like that. I can't. There's like a name for what this is. Like, oh. I don't know what. Yeah. I don't either. But like that 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 crouching tiger hidden. You know that. Chinese cinema style where they they go fighting and all of a sudden they're just flying in the air for no reason and you're like okay well, yeah this, why not yeah why not I mean it's you know it, it, this this looked this impressed me I mean it just it looked very cool doesn't mean I'll pick it up I thought Ghost of Tsushima was very impressive too it but, is um, it's very very impressive this looks like in that vein is this an actual Chinese developer <clears throat> on this project uh, I, I that was something a question I had I wasn't sure if it was. It was or not. I, I, I'm sort of assuming so, but hang on, hmm. look that Sucker Punch took some heat for being, you know, Americans making this game, something. but they also involved a ton of Japanese. Well, all the actors are Japanese. Oh, it's Japan. It's, like, <laughs> it's Japan. <you> know. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they can make a movie about Americans if they want. Like, uh, you know, no one's sure like, they can. Fans punching down on U.S. Uh, I don't really. You know, it's one thing if you're actually appropriating something inappropriate, but if you just make them yeah that's it's okay to make a movie set in another country like i agree i as agree a default baseline what you just look at is like the privilege that's involved in what you're making most you're most uh material. most anime is they're all supposed to look like us which weirds me out because they never right. do but right yeah i don't yeah, like, and like think of like japan like appropriates the crap out of americans they got baseball they like cowboys <laughs> Like, it's cool. Like, this is equal footing exchange as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, but is it punching down when we do it because we nuked them at one point? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we actually yeah. dropped the world's first nuclear bombs on uh, their on their country. So are we, all, are we in a permanent position of... I, just, I don't think we keep score that way because I'm sure they scored some... I'm sure scores were had both ways because you wouldn't have done that if there weren't... Enough. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think it's better just to be peaceful and say we'll adopt the cool things from your culture and you can adopt the cool things from ours i don't yeah now the game i was the most surprised by because i was shocked to find that i give a crap because i i thought i was over it but i really like dead island one i was a yeah. fan 
Um, and I loved the creativity. That original trailer was mind blowing. I thought that was so good. Uh, and I really liked the trailer for this. It made me want Love, Death, and Robots to do like a twenty minute treatment of this or something, or a full half hour, an hour, or whatever. Because uh, there's there's some story here I want to know. I don't know how much the game gets into it, but basically, video game uh, Kravitz. What's his name? I can't think of his name. Lenny Kravitz. That's what he looks Lenny like. <laughs> video game Lenny Kravitz is uh, hanging around his oh, apartment. Like um, at first, he's breathing ragged, so you think he's an undead, but nope, he's just been partying all night. And he goes digging through the house looking for stuff, and then you notice that a bunch of people are dead there. Uh, uh, you know, zomb- zombified or killed otherwise. And then he goes outside and kills a bunch of zombies. And it's all done to some great music. If I played here, I'd get banned from Twitch, so I won't. Um, anyway, I'm weirdly compelled to get excited and play this game when it comes out. I don't know anything about it other than, you know, I know what the first one was, but that was so long ago. Like, they're going to be something different here. Well, um, I mean, they, there was a trailer before this for Dead Island 2 that was also so long ago. Yeah, forever. Like, like, I don't know if you remember the original one with the guy running as he slowly became a zombie. And then at the end, I think like Jack Black sounded like stole his shoes at the very end. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. That was years ago. It was a long time ago. Oh, weird. That's a, yeah, you're not wrong. That this is the ago. same game. It's been a long ass time. Yeah, and they got to release yeah. them next year. They also, I don't know if you guys read too much about this, but Amazon's got a new technology they want to license to everybody that makes it so you can control a bunch of shit in game. Doesn't cost you anything. You just try it. I will definitely try this. I don't. I don't give it much of a life, but it's a little gimmicky. But you can with an Amazon Echo or any device that supports the service games that support it you can with voice commands tell stuff to happen so instead of you taking four clicks to get to a dialogue tree you'll just answer a guy so he'll say oh you have have you been to the woods to see the witch or whatever and your answer would be you would literally say i haven't been there yet what's going on and the thing would be smart enough to know what to tell you next there's a bunch of talk about that whether that thing is anything any good or not i don't know until we get it this is the first game to support it is my point so however it's integrated my guess is it'll be a neat trick that no one will use and we'll move on i got to watch Bo uh try to be dovahkeen by actually talking into his uh skyrim it worked really great <laughs> well that is interesting because that's the mod doing that right that wasn't built into well okay so there's a deeper explanation with that you've got to train your your computer to recognize your voice and your meanings yeah which i've only partially done so i gotcha it's... But still, it wasn't Skyrim vanilla that that was included in. It doesn't. It doesn't work the best until it. You know, we, we, there's still room for these things to improve on. Yeah, but it's a mod, right? Is what I'm saying. No, it's a voice attack. It's an it, actually that's not a mod. That is. Um, Wait. So uh, Skyrim 2011. So have you ever heard it? Like Elite. This is big in Elite Dangerous because even before VR was a thing in Elite Dangerous, it's yeah. still fun to control your ship by going ship. Please turn on the shields. And this was something I used in, in Elite Dangerous a long time ago. Um, it's So voice attack, it's on Steam. It's it's a software that, you know, allows you to input specific commands to do button presses in games. Uh, there's now an open source free one called Voice Macros. So it's just voice macros. Okay. What I downloaded that from the mod site, but is not a mod, is a definition pack. Mm. So I don't have to program all the words myself and program all the button presses and what this actually is how deep this is programmed is that i don't have to equip the shout you know in the game you have to equip the shout and then Mm -hmm. use it Mm -hmm. it auto equips it through button presses uses the shout then equips what you previously had on it so it's like you don't even have all you have to do is shout it's on paper it's amazing (laughs) yes it's a very very cool idea I watched Bo in the early stages of execution on it, and I was cracking up laughing at how <laughs> how it worked. Well, I, was, I, I was learning. it. The RP matched because I'm still learning how to shout properly, <laughs> and I was also learning how to use voice macro. Like, what? Fus! No. Fus! The, the funniest Fus. part about it was that it clearly had been mapped to Bo's speaking voice, but not his game playing voice, because what would happen is he would go, is this working? Foos row. And he'd just talk normal. And then there'd be like a two, like a half a second delay. And then you'd see Foos and it would shoot out. Mm-hmm. And then you'd be like, yeah, it's working. And then they go, okay, say it. 
And instead of saying it the way he literally just said it, because now he's immersed, he goes, Foose roll! <laughs> and it doesn't recognize it, so it doesn't do anything at all. And then he goes, Foose row! He does it again, yells again. Yeah. And then he goes, I don't think this is working. Foose row. It shoots out again. <laughs> he's like, oh no, it's it. working. Yeah. Okay, say it. Foose row! And changes his voice again every <laughs> single time. <laughs> That's amazing. I want to hear more of that, about that when you talk about what you play. But my my original point, I still haven't got an answer for it. When you could, when you went in 2011 to buy any version of Skyrim, it didn't include voice commands, right? That wasn't part of it. This is all add-on shit. Vo- voice yeah. attack, all yeah. of it is add-on. It's okay. never been in the native in the game. So okay. you're saying Amazon will give you this native in the game? Yes, it's native in this game. It has to be. Any game that supports it, it will be native. Um, and it will be... Oh entirely it has to be uh what do you call it um optional because you know too many people want to play the game without even going near this or they're not in the amazon ecosystem or whatever the thing is so it will be playable no matter what but i'm curious just how much it will matter like i was talking to tom on the daily tech news show about this if you're going to reload a weapon and it's just an x button that you push on your controller versus you going reload (laughs) i think the button's faster you know, yeah. like and maybe also, not that much. It, that doesn't add any level of immersion. Like what Bo described with Skyrim right. is not only immersive, but also useful because you've got this whole selection of shouts, which is supposed to be your voice. But you got to go and equip it. You know, All right, I'm going to select the right one and then I got to hit the button. Like it's not immersive at all. Being able to actually yell the things uh, that adds to the immersion. It adds to the world mm-hmm. like playing a video game and go reload the gun. And then he reloads the gun. I'm like, oh, I'm so immersed. Yeah, that's weird. Because that's like that. what I do constantly. If yeah. I was in a zombie situation, I'd be sitting there going, reload. <laughs> well, we Shoot. don't we don't know what Shoot. the um, we don't know what the context like, of it is yet in this game. But my guess is it's things like talk to the NPC and get through dialogue choices and say, where's my next quest? And the guy says it's over there. This sort of stuff. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I had a mod. There's a mod for that, but um, I turned it off because it was behaving weird. Mm. But but I, I have played with that. That's cool. That's a good use. Yeah, it's it'll be interesting. I'm I'm more interested in games that are built around it because yeah. then then you know then that's all it is. But I don't think anyone's going to do that. It's like connect making connect games back in the day or making Sony PlayStation Move games. You had to live with whatever small percentage of the user base bought the extra stuff. Oh, for, you know, real I know money. why I, tur- I know why I turned it off because that stuff's well and good if you're playing on your own, but if you're streaming. You're like, so chat room, how's it going? And it's like, blink, 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 blink. And you're like, your weapons are changing. And he's like, what the hell, man? It's not smart enough not to filter through all your non-gaming stuff. Yeah. And even it, it was like turning on randomly. You can like say, don't listen to me. And then you'll say like, hey, chat room. And it'll turn it back on and start listening. And you're like, you're listening again. Equip arrows. Like it was just going nuts. Well, so. the chat the chat may have just given us a hint as to where this is coming from, from Amazon, because... Amazon has that version of Skyrim that's purely a voice controlled Skyrim thing. Yeah. Well, um, I'm curious how good is how well trained is Alexa? I don't know. I don't know. I mean it's I mean it's pretty good for what it is, but so is, you know, most of these voice things understand yeah. people pretty well. But the the real question is how like John says, how much immersion will it create? I don't know. It really depends on the context and how they use it and if it's just reload my gun, forget it. I'm not into it. But we won't know until later people are automatically very cynical about it i get it it's a big company like amazon trying to force some tech down your throat pretending they know how gamers think like i get it i know why we get skeptical well, yeah, sure things. when they come out and support and full support of nfts and metaverse you get your defenses up but yeah did amazon do that i didn't know that were they big well they... just jet broadly speaking right oh, like okay. companies have all these harebrained ideas they try to sell you on you're like i don't want, like you know yeah there's a time we're having a uh, camera on your phone. People are like, so unnecessary to have a camera on your phone. And now it's like, find a phone with that one. You yeah, it's I mean? almost, it's necessary. It's unnecessary to ever need any other camera, but the one on your it's phone. It's just everyone's used to it. No one's going to take an issue with it. Yeah. Like maybe I mean, they don't I, use it, but. Yeah. I know Nintendo talked about it before it was out. So it's not like, you know, we were just shocked. We went to the store and we were like, what's this? But like, to me, I think the most effective uses of technology and like, cool innovations like the way you see it is somebody just puts it out and you're like oh shit that's amazing like the rumble pack right Mm, like what a 
a good thing that's very easy to laugh at like you look at how big the package is for the game and you're like the hell did i just buy you plug it in you're like well great my controller weighs four more pounds this is exciting yeah i'm gonna get carpal tunnel playing this game great and then it rumbles for the first time while you're flying you're like oh no, this yeah, sometimes great. they're this right. Is great. All yeah. controllers need to me. To, to me, it's like, like analog sticks. It's like that. It's like the D pad originally. It's like any of these innovations that stick, they stick. But there are plenty that don't. Like there's a reason Nintendo didn't make the Switch with a 3D screen and a stylus. They're done yeah. with that. The, the, some of these things are kind of neat in their moment, but then you turn the 3D off and you never play with it again, which means nobody's making games that require 3D because they know people are turning it off. And the fact that you can turn it off is enough to say, ah, that thing's never going to stick. So, you know, for for all of those efforts, every once in a while, something will come out and you'll go, oh, Rumble Pack's a good one. Um, dual stick controllers are a good one. I happen to think the Sony Rumble Pack, uh, what, what, what do they call it? Dual Sense stuff yeah. is is really impressive. Like, it's just, a that's a resolution issue. Like, the res, think of resolution on a screen. It's a lot like that, but with feeling rumble, you're feeling the resolution of like the differences between hooves on a street versus hooves in the snow versus you uh, scratching something on a wall in front of you. Uh, like all these different sensations, they represent them on that controller in a way that is kind of mind blowing. And so I actually think that's probably going to stick and others will follow. They'll all want to have this higher definition, higher resolution, uh, you know, experience with rumble. But then there's things like six axis. Who gives a shit? Oh yeah, nobody cared. Nightmare. They don't care now. Especially when they were like, you you need to make sure everybody uses it. Yeah, it, it's like it just made games worse. It like, did. It was so bad. It absolutely did. And things like the Virtual Boy is another one that always comes up in my head. Is like, oh yeah, they really tried. To, they really put their neck out there on a thing that wasn't ready for prime time, and it didn't stick. And that happens more often than not. But every once in a while, something gets through. Will this be one of those things? I don't know. I, I tend to think maybe no, is, 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 with some limited exceptions to that. Uh, but I, you know, I'd think it'd be more of like a phone game thing, like talking to your phone, going turn left, turn right. I mean, I wouldn't want to do any of that. That all sounds bad. There's a lot of value in the technology. Um, chat just said it for accessibility options and stuff. Like, yeah. there's merit to it sure. for sure. Sure. Um, it's just. You know, they got to be smart about how they do it. Like, it, it's one of those things where, again, like, like with the six axis stuff, like it just got forced into games and it made games worse for it. It was like, what if, you know, what if throwing a grenade in this game was absolutely just annoying instead of a cool thing you did? You know, what if every time you have to balance across a balance beam, you're just like, oh, here's another chore for me to oh. do. Like, yeah. it's just bad. So they just need to stay away from that, put it in. Like, I think the the way they're using it for, you know, space games makes perfect sense. Everybody wants to be able to go raise shields and then computer shields raise, raise shields. Like, computer, that sounds uh, cool. That, yeah. You get excited just saying that on your own. <laughs> so like it's yeah. it's good. You just got to find the right uses for it. And I, I don't know. Nothing about a zombie game makes me go. Yeah, that's the right place for for this. It's an but, odd start. I agree. It's a little bit weird. All right. A couple other things. PlayStation 5, speaking of which, they uh, showed off a new controller. And you might think, wait, don't they just put out a new controller? This is their answer to the Xbox, what's it called? Pro? No. What's it called? Uh, yeah, I think it's called like Pro You have one, or... don't you? You have the... I, I did. Um, Xbox yeah. Prolapse controller. Series Pro series... or something like that. Elite. <laughs> Elite that's Series it. controller, that's it. Yeah. So it's got the paddles underneath. It's got... Everything's interchangeable. It's really expensive, um, but they. <laughs> That's it, it. It's for, <laughs> what are its features? Interchangeable. Expensive. You get to tell people you spent a lot of money on a controller. Yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. really high end, really nice. I mean, everybody I hear that has one loves those things. Um, PlayStation Five now has something like that, so watch for that. And again, I see paddles on the bottom. I see all these, you know, little tweaks. It feels exactly like that. They're just trying to make one of those. And would make it, you know, of course, PC compatible, which is, you know, one area whether whether no matter what you think of the last two or three generations of consoles, Microsoft became the default PC controller. Like it just did and is t still like prominently the, the controller you use on your PCs from the 360 all the way up to these Series X controllers. Um, 
And I think Sony would like to have a little more of that. I'll use a 360 controller for my PC. Yeah, it's great. Those are great. They're great. Do you have the dongles? That how you do it? No, I use put batteries in it. They last a long time. Or is it just Bluetooth then? Because the old ones didn't have. Oh Bluetooth. yeah, it's Bluetooth. I have a, I have a, yeah, sorry, there is a dongle for the Bluetooth. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I use a a wired one, but it's still. I mean, that's just the standard. And but there are plenty of games that su- support the Sony layout. It's just Sony hadn't seemed that hungry for it. This yeah. looks. Mine's like also they're... worn in like a baseball glove too. Like the, I, I new ones, I find the they snap back a little too easy. You know. Mm. And I just find the older ones, they're a little, they're a little more loose. They're very loose, actually. They seem to have a larger range. And uh, I'm just, like I said, it's worn in like a, a, you know, feels, just feels like my controller. I get, I get, I play on the Xbox and I'm like, man, this controller's like. Yeah, I just use a Series X shoe. controller yeah. uh, that I plug in. Yeah, it works that's great. See, that's, that one, that's, I can't use that great. one. You don't like the new ones, do you, Bo? I like them. No, I don't. I love them. I think they're pretty great. Yeah, Yeah, it's just a preference thing. Like I said, this is like an old baseball glove, right? I've tried them. Uh, They work great. They're nice product and everything. But uh, uh, give me my my 360 controller any day of the week. Nice. Well, that's the... And they've dominated that. So maybe Sony can make some ground there with like gamers that are taking that stuff super serious. Um, In this list, a couple of things I'd pull out. Sonic Frontiers got a release date and they showed a little bit more of it. I don't know why I'm curious about Sonic Frontiers. I shouldn't care less for this, but it's for some a big reason, IP and it's a. I kind of want to know how they pull it off. Like, is it fun? It's open worldy looking. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. Open world makes sense for a guy who runs fast everywhere. You know? <laughs> really Even, does. Like the design. Try, the know? design of Sonic games has never really made sense based on the premise of the character. I agree. Yeah, especially when he would run. And have a sudden stop out of nowhere. Yeah, I they, hate that. like let's make levels where like you even watch speedrunners play Sonic games, right? Mm-hmm. And you would think surely if anybody plays a Sonic game and it looks the way it should look, it should be a speedrunner because you should just see them like hold to the right constantly and never stop. No, they're stopping all the time because that's the design of the game. That's not fun. That's not what Sonic's about. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Skippy on the chat reminds me too, those adaptive triggers on the PS4 or PS5 controllers, the DualSense controllers, those are pretty rad because they are there. I don't even know how they work. They freak me out, to be honest, because sometimes you're just using it. They feel like triggers. Click, click, click. No big deal. Like everybody's triggers. But then I got a bow and I pull back on it and the triggers like hard to pull on. It's like eh, there's like this just right amount of resistance on it. And then it sometimes with you. Yeah. sometimes I have a gun or something and it straight up stops at the halfway point. No matter how strong I am, I can't pull it any further. I don't know how they're doing that. That is mind-blowing to me, the way those work. So anyway, more of that, please. And even Microsoft hinted there like, yeah, we love what Sony did with their controller. We may have to do some of that moving forward. Yeah. Because that's what a Phil- new Xbox controller at some point, I'm that, sure. That's what Phil says. You know, lift that idea. Yeah. Sounds like a Phil thing to do, doesn't it? Like, we like what our competitors are doing, and we're going to – that's such a thing for him to say. We'll yeah. talk about him in a second. The other thing was Gotham Knights. Uh, for the for once in 2022, a game is coming out earlier than they told us. Whether that game's any good, I don't know. But Gotham Knights, the uh, uh, the the uh, Arkham Origins developers game about all the Robins and everybody trying to avenge Batman's death, uh, that's coming sooner, like by two weeks or something this year. Whereas the other one, the uh, Kill the Justice League Suicide Squad thing, which is made by the proper Arkham team. Yeah, the Rocksteady. Rocksteady. That's not till like way late next year or something. So, and yes, Batman. It, the Batman dies part is not a spoiler chat. That's the setup of the game. The entire point of the game is Batman's dead. Is he really dead? I don't know. But in the game. Probably not. Probably he not. usually isn't. But Nightwing and Red Hood and everybody's got to do their shit. Batgirl, everybody's got to do their stuff to try to figure out who killed him and stop it and all that. He's probably not dead is my guess because Batman never dies. Not truly. Yeah, yeah he's just pretending to be dead so yeah. they would just, they'd actually do something. Exactly right. All right, speaking of Phil Spencer, um, Phil Spencer responds to Bo confirming he goes to bed at 10 p.m. and does not stay up all night playing games. His friends tease him for being a bedtime lame Yeah, so he did an interview on Bloomberg, and this is the, one of the first things that came up. He's like, <laughs> I just want to say, I just want to say, he didn't name me, but I know he was talking to me because he I felt said it. he looks like he stays up all night playing games. Yeah. It felt so, Phil, if you're listening, 
Sorry about saying you, you shit your pants at night. I just, you know, you're, you still feel like one of us, but okay. I think you still I, I, I don't know if I believe you necessarily. There are some people who play games and then go to bed in timely fashion. Yeah. I think Scott's there, but I also think you probably stay up too late playing Steam Deck and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, so when he says in this interview, how many hours a week do you play video games? And the answer is 15. I immediately doubled that to 30. <laughs> well, well, maybe he's too busy being a CEO and can't. You know, he's got to give an appropriate answer that fits in the. I'm definitely enjoying the product, but I'm working very hard. I know the gamer lies that gamers tell. We all know them here. <laughs> he's thirty. It's he's thirty. He's either thirty or he's two, but that would put him in liar category. And he's too genuine. I I think he's just he is too genuine. That's what makes his salesmanship as a CEO so palatable and good. Yeah. Um, that there is some realness behind all of that. And um, anyway, so anyway, sorry, Phil, for casting aspersions. I was glad to hear your friends roast you for going to bed so early. Sure. Just because you're a CEO of Xbox doesn't mean... I, I assume you have, like, helpers and stuff, so, you know. But maybe you just like going to bed at that time because that works for you. But you Sure. Know, it's, sure. I think he, he's deservedly roasted did say something really interesting about mobile he says the biggest gaming platform is mobile games in his view he's not wrong it just is by the numbers so you know whether we like it or not he's he's right he says they're regretful that microsoft doesn't add a native platform in the fight and mobile was a big motivation for the abk uh, acquisition so king is the you know the meat there uh and the ip and player base player base of blizzard for uh, what they may do in future mobile stuff. So like it or not, they see that writing on the wall as well. And uh, mm. I don't know. They're attacking it from every angle. So on the one hand, it's like, well, we need to have some native mobile stuff happening, but also we're going to make it so Game Pass plays on mobile and you can hook a controller up to mobile and everything from tablets to phones to to televisions with built-in Game Pass capability. Like this is our strategy. And they're, I think they're smart to do that. And it is a bummer for them. Like Windows Phone was never successful enough um and there's lots of reasons why but whatever you can, you can get in that a different time but that and their acquisition of nokia went nowhere uh years ago there um what was the other thing they did there for a minute uh, i forgot oh the zoom the zoom could have turned into a platform that was much bigger and ex included more including phone capability they just just never quite got their head around it i'd say it worked out for them pretty well because the advantage is they can come out and be like, yeah, we don't want to be platform native because they're not massively invested in, in selling their own platform. Right? Yeah, they used like, to be. They but actually not now. had hardware they had to ship. Yeah. The guys in the hardware part of the company are not going to be pleased with Phil Spencer going like, eh, play it on whatever. You know, like they want to succeed too, probably. And uh, so so it, it sort of just makes... Uh, in in a way, you you always lament, you know, maybe like what isn't working well, but I think this is actually an advantage for Microsoft currently. So it's a good take. Um, he also reconcer or reconfirmed his basic take on exclusivity. I actually really like this quote, so I'm going to read it. He says, "Your two kids want to play together, but they bought the wrong piece of plastic, and that sucks." Reducing friction should be the top goal of any gaming of the gaming industry. Unquote. I I agree with him, dude. Make it less hard for people to play and save and move and all that. I'm I'm a big fan of this sort of thing. Nothing makes me sadder than a brand new cool looking game on Steam. And I'm like, man, I'm gonna get that. And then I find out it doesn't have Steam Cloud Save yet or something. And I'm just immediately annoyed because now I'm like, well, I I want to take that with me and play it on my desktop. And yeah. I can't. So it's, this is a little like that. Um, I think, I don't know if anyone should read into that too much, but if that's really his attitude and, you know, higher ups don't fight him on it, maybe that does mean a more platform agnostic Activision Blizzard content thing moving forward. Maybe Call of Duty's forever everywhere. Um, I think, again, it's their situation that puts them in that boat, though, because um, they have the they have like a lot the back end on the cloud right like they're positioned in such a way that they're not coming out and saying something like this is not harming any part of their business yeah you know i think if they were deep on like you might say they're deep on their xboxes uh, but i i don't 
those are loss leaders. Their bread is not buttered on those machines. They only give those machines out so they can get Game Pass on it, where the bread is buttered. But if Game Pass, you know, if their service can be everywhere, then why not? I don't know. Judging by how TV went, I think the, I think the Game Pass thing is a limited window of opportunity for them. Oh, interesting. I don't think they're Netflix doesn't remain Netflix forever. I don't think Game. The only way Game Pass remains Game Pass forever if, is if it does have, if it does command a lion's share of, while not platform exclusive, Game Pass service exclusive titles, you know, or, you know, however the strategy works long term. That's kind of, yeah, I mean, that's happening I mean, now, but how will that be in 10 years? That's like it. everyone's behind the eight ball, so we kind of laugh. Either, either it's like a Ubisoft play where it's just their services or it's like EA, like they all been half-assed, but that's not going to last forever. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That. I saw a lot of cynicism about this quote uh, saying like, you know, he says that he, you know, wants to reduce uh, friction let everybody play together. Meanwhile, Microsoft's buying up exclusives left and right. But I think to Bo's point, I think that that is like future plans because I, I think he's right. I think eventually as people realize more and more that subscription plans are a, a good way to get your products out there, when that happens, Netflix is judged based on what it brings to the table. Like it's Netflix exclusives, whether that's what they have exclusive streaming rights to or what their originals are. And I think it would be foolish for Microsoft to just be like, well, no, we're the only one really doing it right now. So we don't need to worry about any exclusivity because we'll all play nice together. I'm sure. Yeah. So I, I don't really, I, it's a fair criticism to be like, Oh yeah, you're all play together. Then why are you making all these purchases and acquisitions? But I also think it's realistic. Uh, to just the direction that the business is moving into. Yeah, I agree. He declined to comment about Bobby Kodak getting booted out of ABK, ABK or not. Um, that bummed me out a little bit. Also, that stuff's ongoing. I don't think they. I mean, that's just lawyer stuff. You, they yeah, they haven't you. even acquired him, so I don't. Yeah. I don't think they could make that. Yeah, he doesn't. Thing. He doesn't get to talk about that stuff yet. Give it some time. Maybe he will. Maybe maybe he'll never I hope, get to talk I mean, about I hope him. they do. It will certainly, we will be on this show going, wait, we're really disappointed if they're like, and here's our new chief advisor, Bobby Kodak, after uh. they merge. Like, like yes, we're going to be unhappy about it. But I mean, like, now's not the time to figure that out. It hasn't even happened yet. So let's, let's see what happens. Funny enough today, I don't know if anyone noticed, I'm wearing an Activision shirt. Um, mm. It actually yeah. it was given to me by a tech who worked for Activision uh, in the, on the back end of things and uh, had to defend it twice today on stream. So I'll just get out ahead of it now and just say it's a really comfortable shirt and maybe they're being sold into better hands and this in no way endorses Bobby Kotick as a decent human being. Oh, okay? people are taking it as a signal that you're like... I, I, Poor I, pro, pro, purchased pro by Bobby. Activision. I'd Look wear a it. shirt. That I would stop short of... There are very few things I wouldn't wear in a shirt. Because who cares? You're, damn pro, shirt. you're pro union busting and pro workplace sexual <laughs> right. harassment. Right. Exactly. I mean, I agree it's stupid, but also, yeah, that, that uh, there's a lot of stupid people out there. Yeah. Just gonna and I'm not advertising it. it. I'm just wearing a shirt that I happen to have in my closet. Honestly, that's how it works with me. If I had a shirt well, yeah, with uh, yeah. with uh, Hello Kitty on it and it was comfortable, I'd be, I'd be wearing it. I, don't care. I worked at a GameStop for years. I wore nothing but video game advertisement shirts for a long time. I didn't have to buy clothes for so long. They just sent promo material after promo material. There's always shorts or, or, or shirts. Uh, sometimes shorts. Their underwear really? was sent out Whoa. sometimes. What boxers. was the what was the underwear? Like a Nintendo like Kirby uh, what underwear? Was or what? It? what it was that it wasn't Ghosts and Goblins, but it was that game that was trying to be in the vein of it, like Maximus. Uh I and like remember. the whole idea was he got hit and his armor would fall off like the old Ghosts and Goblins game. Mm -hmm. And he'd just be running around in underwear. So they sent <laughs> pairs of boxers <laughs> to everybody. That makes sense, sure. The most comfortable shirt that I had, and I took like four of them, was uh, from Metroid Prime. It was this green, like military style t shirt. Ooh. And I don't know what they made those out of, but they stretched just right and they were incredibly comfortable. I would love that. I, I know that I had at least three of those shirts, and two of them eventually had to get thrown out simply because you could see straight through the shirt. I wore it so much. So. 
uh, those were the best. That so, was the best. So you're out nippling when you're in those shirts, and eventually your mom's like, "Dude, oh no, this had been after that. You weren't your mom. You weren't answering to your mom at that point. I don't think. I might have been like a little bit. Still GameStop era, yeah. It's like because John I, I was living at home for couple years i can see i can see your areola again through your prime shirt time to (laughs) time to put that away anyway uh (laughs) let's see what else you say uh oh i like this talked about metaverse uh gamers have already been in the metaverse for the past 30 years was his answer that was my favorite quote because that's the way i feel about it every time somebody starts talking about it like the the amount of conversations we've had on this show about the metaverse and like Here's why it's revolutionary. I'm like, this shit is going on every single weekend at Limsa Lomensa. Go hang out, talk to somebody. You'll get invited to a bar where everybody's RPing and hanging out and doing the stuff that they do. Like this stuff is literally everywhere. It's been going on for a long time. You don't need VR to do it. It probably adds a new level of immersion. Sure. But it's been around. Well, in, in theory, they're talking about everything's connected metaverse because that's the whole definition of metaverse. So the idea would be you could go from your Limsa, Lominsa, whatever the hell you say it. Yeah, uh, no, you got it right, actually. You can, go, you can go from that sex party and then just transition straight over into whatever World of Warcraft, what's theirs? Um, uh, Goldshire. The place, uh, Goldshire. Goldshire. Go and, straight into the Goldshire yeah. debauchery. And then you're like, you know, I'm I'm kind of in the mood to walk around Conan land. And then you could do that immediately. Like that. You can do that on your computer. You can, yeah. That, you I, can have them both open at the same time. But I know what you mean. Steam, you know what I mean? I've installed multiple games on it. What before, they what they want. I games. agree with you guys that, it's, that, that we've been doing it in chunks. And we are we understand the idea of what the community part of it means more than they do on a corporate level. One hundred percent. I agree. However, to be fair, uh, they're talking about two things. One metaverse meaning the it's an it's a universe fully connected in the way our physical world is but in in cyber world space yeah they're but they also the mean operating system. but they also they're, mean who's going to own it that's also what they're talking about it, and who's going to make the most money v, if vr becomes a mainstay there's going to be an operating system for for it yeah that's what the metaverse is code for that yeah it's that is whatever what microsoft windows windows commands a lot of sway it has a lot of market share a lot of influence a lot of businesses use it zuckerberg Big wants revenue. to be that by the way that's what they that, want to so be so metaverse is code for operating system yeah. like and the idea of an operating system on a headset is not what it looks like on a pc obviously there's programming and stuff going on behind the scenes but you as a user when you use your operating system you click shiny buttons oh what here's a button it opens my <laughs> browser so in what does that look like? Are you gonna have just shiny buttons in the metaverse? We're still figuring out the best way to use your elect your digital device in the VR space. Yeah, and I think metaverse there's just a lot of like bullshit and marketing that goes along with it that it's been poorly done. Hundred percent. It's been poorly done. They need to hire a games company to kind of just help them with that side of things to sell some sizzle or something. Yeah, because they because they're I have a quest too. It's a good freaking product. You can shit on Facebook and Meta all you want, but thumbs up on an affordable headset that functions flawlessly, smoothly, like as an excellent experience. That's a great piece of hardware and a great piece of software running it, in my opinion, at least from a user. Yeah, no, that's great. They, oh, they actually should be receiving high praise for that. And so, you know, and like what's Xbox, by the way, we praise Xbox all the time. They're doing nothing with VR. Sony's doing way better. Well, they've got stuff VR. going on, but it's none of it's for us. It's for well, nothing right now, right? Like, yeah. uh, so they don't, you know, they don't, we're not giving most anticipated awards to Xbox here on the core show. But, um, <laughs> but, but Facebook has, or Meta has done a phenomenal job of the hardware and is still doing. I'm looking forward to seeing their new headsets. They are killing it. This is a great piece of They're camera. way out in front with that, for sure. And, and yeah. um, so that's why I look at this metaverse stuff as a bunch of hooey that they, they just need to hire a team to market this better. Like, whatever strategy is going on there sucks. 
And they, I think they need they can still call it metaverse if they want, but really we're talking about operating system. They just need to be honest about it. I don't even think it's operating system. Like it needs to be the internet. The internet works like this. I have a browser. I hop on. I look at it. I go, this is cool. I want to go somewhere else. I click that. It takes me there. I didn't change my front end. It's the same interface. That's, my window didn't change. I'm just that's going. That's the issue. It, it, internet was built to be usable. Like you don't have to pay a toll gate to, you, I guess you have to pay an ISP. Exactly. But you don't have to pay a toll gate to Google to use your Google. Exactly. Search, right? And that's my point. It or needs to be HTTP. like that. That And if, if anyone thinks it's going to be gated, they're wrong. This is where they screw up. It's not going to be yeah. Meta or Microsoft or anybody. It will be, it has to be open standards and gateways to anywhere I want to go, no matter where it is, what it is, what I'm doing. That's how it has to be. Anything yeah. short of that is them hoping, but it ain't happening. They're going to be, there'll be AOLs for hot seconds. And then people will go, there's so much more outside of this. Why are we stuck in here? There'll be a new That's language. Happening. You won't have frogpants.com. You'll have frogpants.world. Yeah, and I'm ready. People will, when they want to find your content, they'll go to frogpants. They'll be greeted by your beautiful drawings. And they can, whatever, if, if barfing is the way we control things, they can barf their way to the page they want. And they go, man, <laughs> that picks the, the changes the world dynamically around them. And you'll see other people barfing. Like it'll be 15 people visiting your website and you can see them there. Set it to private so you don't see anyone. Yeah. Um, and like, that's like experiencing VR content that way is going to be a lot of fun. It's it, like the interactables, right? Like what's fun and interactive, like clicking like buttons, mm -hmm. commenting mm -hmm. is going to be, you know, um, dancing or something, you know, if you want to say hello to someone, you go bop, bop, a dee, bop, boop or whatever, like ends up being the thing that works. Yeah, and, and like I still like that they're doing something with it. I'm I'm turning into a pretty stalwart VR enthusiast, and, and but I um, see I'll go a step further I, and say I, I'm it, like cheering them on to win. But it can't depend on VR being your interface. It can't. It has to be everything everywhere. It's got to be my phones <laughs> let me into that world. My TV screens let me into that world. All my devices let me into that world, and VR is a prominent way to be in that world. But it can't be the only way. Or else, this is all not going to happen. At least not yeah. until we're all wearing glasses and it's well, like, like all things what transition, right? Like yeah. what it sounds like is, you know, all those movies that like came out, you know, forty years ago, 30, 40 years ago, and they set the future as like the time we're in now. Yeah, and they had all these stupid ideas of what it was going to be like, like twenty fifteen for uh, yeah, uh, Back to the Future and all that, yeah. Future yeah, too. and it was it was just like they're gonna be doing this and they're gonna be doing this. That's gonna be crazy in the future. It's gonna be yeah. crazy. Yeah. And like, if you look at the technological advancements, it is crazy. Like how far we've come. All you have to do is think about like how much space is on a like a floppy disk compared to what is on a thumb drive, and you're like, oh my gosh, that's mind blowing, mm -hmm. mind blowing. You think about the way we used to download images and shit like that back in the day like crazy innovation but it doesn't look like any of the stuff they talked about <laughs> because the reality is the future looks a lot like the present with a little bit more convenience yeah you're and not like, wrong that's the way it really you're not goes. wrong but there was a time if you watch star trek tos the original series and you saw kirk and everybody rocking around with these things in their pockets they could talk to each other and where they were or even even lesser when they're at a desk in his office and he's got a semi sort of thin screen and Spock's on it talking from the basement of the ship, wherever the hell that is down in engineering. And they're doing it in real time. That all seemed insane at the time. Like just, this is yeah. never going to happen. And now we do that stuff. We're doing it right now, literally. Yeah. But this stuff, like, I, I just want to push back on that just a little bit. Cause this stuff's not science fiction. It all exists now. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It, it, it yeah. Required, but there's it, a it difference needs... between it exists and it works and it's widely adopted and used yeah, by it needs people. investment. It needs investment. That's why f Facebook has, you know, like a flying car exists. It needs investment. Right. But it actually, this it's actually function. It exists like VR chat. It's a yes. Thing. A All flying need... car exists. It, it's real. It exists. No, it's real. It's not, a just can't it's not an acceptable get comparison. One. Like a flying car exists, <laughs> but is riddled with problems. VR chat exists. And doesn't have pro. It works like you're. You, we're, this is apples and oranges. What it needs is infrastructure and some investment. We got to get the headset weight down. 
we got to slowly, it's going to be slowly. There are a lot of people like VR super dumb. A lot of people thought internet was dumb. All the, like, I was, it was a niche thing. Now everyone's got a computer or a phone. Like, so we can, I, there are good use cases to sit on your couch, toss on your glasses instead of a big headset, shop on Walmart for 30 minutes and have an interactive experience with other people. Like I, I that is not outside. That is not science fiction. That is like in, just, you know, you can do that stuff now. much investment. Yeah away mm -hmm. and that'll be a thing and You're like totally right phones can convert into um you know cardboardy uh vr headset what if the phones in the next 10 years come equipped with some ability to strap it onto your face what if your phone is your pair of glasses like you, you through bone conduction you might even be able to strap on the glasses, make a phone, have a video phone call in a virtual space, take the glasses off. Like that is not far away. It's just investment in becoming the incumbent for the infrastructure. Cause you're right. It's not adopted widely yet. It also depends but, on the practicality. But it's, like, it's like you can see it on the horizon. We're yeah. not, we're not talking you're, about flying cars. You're, with problems you're totally right. Laws of physics and, and like the reality of, of accidents. Yeah. Um, we're, it's actually available. We just need, I think we the bandwidth could still be increased because we're going to be sending more information. And then we need the headsets to be able to process a little more data to increase the fidelity. I find fidelity quite low, and that's part of the issue. Yeah, for but, sure all of that's – everything but, you like said you is said true. The drives, but the drives there's, got smaller. Yeah, the but there's still a practicality issue here, and that's the, one I, that's the one thing I have a hard time putting my finger on because I'm, I like VR a lot. I'm a proponent. Uh, I just – think that it's, it's more it's more than just hey one one huge aspect is that they didn't get small enough thin enough i totally agree they, that needs yeah. to just keep happening until they're almost like putting on a pair of ray bands and you're and you're sure. in if they weigh as much as this yeah like a pair of ray bands yeah. are a little heavier but yeah. still even then i think they have you know. to be they just got to keep getting smaller i and lighter. feel like they easily could i feel like the most obvious connection is we've got all this cloud computing business where it's like put the graphic load on these processors that could in theory have unlimited you know yield as long as you have a good strong connection you connect that to how important mobile infrastructure is and how fast it's getting and all of a sudden now you have a device that all it needs to do is be able to display over the glasses and have a strong enough internet connection to connect to something far more powerful running in the background and you've got 90% of what you need in just that situation. Yeah, uh, I've been playing um, Skyrim over Airlink as well. Even though I have the cable, it saves on battery, actually. So I plug it in, but I do it over Airlink. So my f visual feed is being fed wirelessly uh, to me. So, so yeah, the, the key is you're going to want nine, a refresh rate of 90. Like You want a high refresh rate because it, it's disorienting for a lot of people when there's flicker and jerking. It's not good. But yeah, it's not. We're, we're you're not far. Uh, you're not wrong. Definitely investment there. and progress needed, but we are not far out. We're that. there. We're almost there. My again, my whole thing though is it will it will all come down to what's convenient for people, but not just that. Like if it's going to become a part of our life in the way our phones have and the way the internet has, then it has to be applied to life in ways that make sense and aren't just people sitting vegging on their couch and not doing anything, just like spending all their time in VR. I don't think that ends up being the future at I, all. I, I, I actually disagree. I've had my VR headset. I play a lot of stuff seated. I sit down. I sit down. And I Last night, I, log, I played Skyrim for hours, and I was like, oh, let me log off. And then I actually put the headset back on, and I got lost down a K-pop rabbit hole. Because you're looking for side-by-side uh, side -side videos, and something entertaining I discovered is Korea's really embraced... Um, vr video like it's hard to find it just entertaining youtube stuff like I, this show would you know i'd watch something like this if it was in vr video like i, I want to see the 3dness i want the quality and then i found that the dance troops like the k-pop dance troops will actually do like a one-off vr video and it's you're like it's like you're right there on stage with them watching them dance feeling them in that 3d space sorry feeling sounds gross i just mean like you're 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 feeling 
it's just hits different when both eyes are getting the stereo vision. It just it works. I agree, and but you're you not. But that that's scene, not my you know? point. My point isn't those things work. They do work. What I'm saying yeah. is you won't work <laughs> if if all you do is spend time in there and not just you. I well, mean, I everybody. Said that about internet, like World of Warcraft, man, you're gonna lose your job. No, I agree. I agree. You know, but like, that's my point. Um, Whatever sustainable is sustainable, and at some point, at some point, the idea that all we are is in there. I don't think that ever happens. I just don't see No, no, no. I think the use cases you strap on your headset, you do a bit of shopping, play a game, and like you might use your phone and put it away, you know? And then there might be instant VR Instagram. And so, yes, your teenagers are on (laughs) VR Instagram too long, taking VR photos of each other or something. But, uh, you know. That's why most companies are betting on mixed, like AR and VR mixed stuff. I really want a VR camera. I just think it's too expensive, but it's. At some point, VR cameras will also be more ubiquitous. So not only imagine taking a snapshot, because you don't have to take video. You can just take a 3D snapshot of your family yeah. and put on your thing and look at your family VR photos. And it's like, it's a little more mm, than an actual photo. It just hits different. We'll never. I don't think we'll ever get rid of flat screen stuff. That's the... You know, I don't yeah. think it's like a A or B. I think it's we have both. But yeah. uh, VR photos are nice. And VR video is nice. Also, um, I was going to say the uh, I forget, but anyways, it's it's uh, I th- oh right because um, the camera thing too will really make it interesting. So if you have your VR phone room or something like that, so you can sure. see someone in full body image, you know, like who knows what the conventions of tomorrow will be, but this stuff will. Could potentially become. Int- oh, that's what I want to bring up is is films. We also don't have a film language. This is the most exciting thing about VR, is that you know we have a film language. Mm-hmm. Like if you see something framed improperly, maybe you don't art- If you didn't go to film school or something, I don't know. You can't articulate what you don't like about it, but someone didn't follow the rules of filmmaking as they've been carried out. Like, we don't have that for what a dramatic presentation in VR looks like. And I find that exciting, almost like there's a part of me that like, oh, I want to become a VR theoretician. And certainly you see those experiments on VR video sites where people are trying to make weird narrative things mm-hmm. and still don't know quite how to approach it. Like, do you include the viewer? Is the viewer just a voyeur and you build the drama around it so they can, like, how does this all work? So there's like, it's like when f- movies were first made, people were theorizing how to make the first movies and, you know, like uh, Eisenstein is one that comes to mind in the 1920s. He made Battleship Potemkin, a Russian filmmaker, wrote books theorizing that cuts, uh, juxt- uh, two disparate images next to each other synthesized into a third idea that wasn't literally being displayed. And there's like a film theory behind how you are working along with the film to create a thought that isn't actually on the picture based on the cuts. And that you could change shot two to other things and change the context. And you're like, well, that's very basic, isn't that filmmaking? But like, they had to theorize that this would be a standard through which we would enjoy film as a narrative experience. And I think that's, it's exciting. That doesn't exist for VR right now, you know? And I'm like, it's exciting to be like, holy shit, like, we're at a moment where, um, you know, these kinds of things can be invented yeah there's there's going to be a lot of stuff that happens i'm not sure they'll ever find it the problem with vr video in a or the the reason film language works for us as story loving creatures is there's a focus to everything so when we're meant to be listening to somebody we're focused on them and if something happens off screen that's discordant so moving over here to see what happened is is a tense moment but you're always being led down a pipe with linear storytelling and when you talk about VR or potentially VR storytelling and film or whatever this the the technology is all about anywhere all anywhere I want to be all the time so if I get bored with what this guy's saying I can turn around over here and walk over and see what the dog's doing so it ends up becoming not completely non-linear even though they're still trying to tell you a story how are you gonna yeah like that's like an interactive experience i'm talking about strictly a passive video experience yeah but that's what i mean like Like, what what is even because anything anything that's directed isn't really a vr experience you're just on rails right you just like like all movies and tv shows are on rails yeah you can have those experiences with a different format of filmmaking like Imagine it's a movie about a couple arguing. I think there's one called Divorce Story, for example. 
and it's told through shots. What is that movie? How is that movie just as impactful or is that experience if you're literally sitting between two adults arguing and they're performing to such a degree that it's like a real video, a real story, but like, do you tell it in cuts? Like, how does that, it doesn't exist, a, a standard through which we tell uh, filmic uh, tales with VR cameras. And, uh, you know, so, because what you're talking about is like interactivity, which is also, you know, my computer, I can watch a movie, but I can play a video game or visit a website. And those are like distinct activities, but film is film. And I think there will still be video in VR. It'll be VR video, but we don't have a VR film language yet. Yeah. And even I've in video very, games. I've seen some very bad ones. <laughs> even when video games go speak in the language of film, they stop and tell us something. You know, they don't. It's it's me running around as Bayek in uh, the old, you know, ancient Egypt doing lots of random things, anything I want to do. But the minute I talk to that lady, camera switches. She talks to me and talk to her. It switches back and forth. I can't control. I can speed it up and get out of there or cancel it or whatever. But if I want to listen to that story, it's being told in this traditional way. It will be really interesting to see how that evolves because yeah. sometimes you're in a set piece in a video game like Halo 3, the final sequence where you're in the warthog trying to get out of there and you're missing all those mm -hmm. those panels that are falling away. And if anyone remembers that, I don't for some reason I totally remember it. Um, and I think it was three, not two, but anyway, that's, that's a very filmic moment or very epic moment that's happening in real time all around you. Uh, the Nathan Drake games are like that too. Lots of shit falling apart, things exploding. You just, you hope you're going the right direction. That's cinematic, but it feels like there, we have more to explore there. Like other yeah, ways to yeah. figure out what the hell our brains want to see in this. It's super interesting. Invent. Even just because what resonated with what you said there was you have a shot of somebody and then somebody else and they're talking and you get that it's a conversation that had to be invented. Just two yeah. people talking. Yeah. Like there was a point in time where we had film, but we never put them together to make people talk and it be a thing. Like just as, as basic as that, like, and then it was like, Oh, when we put these shots together, people understand they intuit natively that it's a conversation. They mm -hmm. don't have to have them because old talkies, everyone's all in the same shot. Right. Like, you know, true they're not doing as much cutting as now like there's millions of cuts in the film but you know anyway. yeah it's uh, um I'm, I'm excited about vr and you know phil didn't really talk about it so that sucked but um, <laughs> but we did <laughs> but overall it was still great so i don't mean to we really i don't really mean to take away from his no it's all good he great. he uh, i like this thing he said about nfts he says he's cautious on them he says quote it creates a worker force out of the players and mentioned this has also existed already aka gold farmers uh, hundred percent agree. That's the right thing to say about all that, because it is kind of it's that. It's fun. Like, what's CEOs, especially nowadays? All the CEOs are like, "Yeah, we got a little NFT something going." Yeah. You know, uh, he like he brings up gold farmers, which I know for everyone listening and for us, we know what a gold farmer is. But there are still people that I, I mention. If I say the word gold farmer, they'll be like, "Oh, they have no idea." They'll yeah. think of an actual miner, probably, mm -hmm. like, or not know what I mean. Yeah, so, I agree. You know, I love he, that. He uses in 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 uh, in culture. In his his and, thirty hours a week that you've applied to him, he's been playing. Yeah, he knows thirty hours. He uh, also. Well, we're getting to the best part. The last item we can't skip. Okay, so. he says he's currently playing Cult of the Lamb. That's not the last part, but he's playing that right now, which is kind of hilarious because that game is under a little bit of controversy for. Uh, was it Gary Whitta or somebody says they have information claiming that Sony paid that team or that that game off developer publisher whatever to not put that one on game pass i heard that was not true but i also heard the rumor that that was the game yeah so, that's what i it is could gary funny. witta gary witta claims he knows 100 percent that it is that game and what happened but i don't know if he's offered any proof or anything so i have no idea but pretty weird that whole thing but anyway okay here's the best thing he confirmed that sachi nadella the ceo of all things microsoft the entire biz Caught him playing games while they were on a meeting once. Yeah, that's great. And broadly, the question was, "Do you play games on meetings?" And his re he was not like, "No, of course not." He was <laughs> like, "I'm like, I'm, I'm looking at Scott Johnson right now." That's what I felt like. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Scott, every time you're like, "I had a meeting this week, but I uh, played uh, Shipbreaker." Happens right all now. the time. Yeah. And I'm like, that's "Why he oh. listens to this show? He wants Scott's picks for what are good meeting games." Yeah, that's, good meeting that's games. Really, what he's here for? <laughs> I'll give you guys a whole list, like my deck list last week. I'll give you a, 
Again, oh yeah, that would list. be great. You yeah. actually should do a meeting games list. Oh, I up- updated that today. I added a uh, uh, oh your Steam Deck list. Tremunda, yeah. Tremunda. What's it called? The the forty K. Tremunda. What's it called? <laughs> Necromundo or Necromunda? The, yeah, the Warhammer forty k Necromunda is it the one you? Yeah, it's a Hive World thing. Anyway, What's it's all the slash command for it again. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. God but... just made me want to watch a movie that doesn't exist. That doesn't Tremunda exist. Necromunda from Down Under. Necromunda. I... Necromunda. That's it. Necromunda. Is that right? It's the there's a board game too. But anyway, the Steam game called Hired. There it is. Necromunda Hired Gun. Necromunda, that's it. Okay, the slash is slash deck games. Yes. Uh this game com slash deck games. There you go. Thank you. Uh the 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 this game is like Doom. It's basically Doom, but on, in the 40k universe. I th- I think Bo would actually really like this game. Anyway, I got this game awesome. working on this on the Steam Deck really well, so I updated it today. So today you got a handful of new 3D and 2D games added to the list at, at frogpants.com slash deck games. So uh, check that out if you're interested. But I think you'd like this game, Bo. Oh, this is a single player game. Yeah. I thought it was a multiplayer game no. for some reason. No, it's basically Doom. Like I, oh shit, in a in a pretty good way. I mean, I I think it plays really well. Um, the world design is insane. Like I kind of want to spend time in this place in an RPG or something. So if I had only one complaint, it would be I I kind of wish they went for something that wasn't just a shooter. It's a really good shooter though. Um. I know there's there's some uh, the reviews. Some of the older reviews are a little middling, but the newer ones are a little more positive on it. I really liked it, but it plays great on the meeting game. Oh yeah, hell yeah, great meeting game. Except you'll look you'll look intense. You'll look like you're doing something hardcore. Yeah, so maybe not the best meeting game. Yeah, maybe not. We need criteria because I was gonna say you should add to your Dex games list by putting good meeting games. Yeah, good meeting games is a great idea. Actually, I might do that. Yeah. Um. All right. There's that. Because they're fun, but you don't, you know, you don't risk blowing your cover. Yeah, which you don't want. To, you don't want to risk that. And then women can tell Phil to go ref- refer to that list. <laughs> All right. Can you imagine we're... Phil Spencer is visiting your website to find your list of best meeting. That'd games be amazing, right? We live in. I can't even imagine. But you if reach he... out or just give me a little. Win. I swear to God, he was answering me when I was watching that interview. I was like, it's like he's talking to he's me. He's right there, man. Yeah, he's listening so. the whole time. Maybe he is. I don't know. We've had weirder I mean, things you, happen. You never know. You never know. But I just the way he answered it, it was like he was literally talking. Dude, about freaking like, Dead Mouse called and left a voicemail for my Diablo show. Anything can happen. <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying it just felt that way, and I was like, <laughs> I, 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 who else is talking to him about this? Like, you don't play enough hours of video games. Is that like maybe that is a thing? I don't know. Maybe. All right. Well, there's that. Uh, We're going to take a quick break, quick pee break. And when we come back, dear Martha, even though dear Martha's got COVID right now, but yeah, uh, or I guess the people calling writing to Martha have COVID. But anyway, dear sexy Martha, dear sexy Martha. Exactly. But we're going to do that uh, real quick. We'll come right back after a quick pee and we'll continue from there. So stay tuned, everybody. All right. I'm going to 